What is up guys and welcome back to another initial focus video and today is the very first episode of Tech Trouble, the video series that I'll be doing to showcase quick and easy fixes for everyday technology problems without needing to void warranties, take apart things, jailbreak, root, all that good stuff. So let's get right into it here with the first video, iCloud Backup Full. So this is a common problem that I know a ton of people have and at the end of the day you may just have to buy more backup storage but let's jump through and see if there's anything we can do to free up some space that you may not know is being taken up so let's jump right into settings here now first off at the time of this recording i am on the latest version of ios which is 9.3.1 so if you are on a earlier or if this is in the future later version of ios your settings may look different so keep that in mind now before we go into actual iCloud settings, I want to scroll down to photos and camera. Now the reason I want to jump in here first is one, because photos and videos are usually the biggest thing that people want to make sure are being updated, and this will kind of make your other iCloud settings vary depending on how you have it set up. Now iCloud Photo Library is the newest way to store and backup all photos and videos to iCloud. It basically keeps a separate uh, library instead of being tied in with the rest of your phone's backup. So every device you have, be it an iPhone, an iPod, an iPad, whatever, it's not going to keep photos in the main phone's backup. It's going to backup everything uh, photos and video wise individually in its own library. And I'll show you more about that in a couple minutes. Now below that you have the option to optimize or download and keep originals. Basically if you choose optimize it will upload a full resolution image to iCloud and only keep a optimized version to the actual phone because if you take a you know really nice photo you don't need all the megapixels there on your phone because it's a small 5.5 or 4 inch screen whatever it is. But if you ever share the photo or print it or anything like that, it will download the full resolution from iCloud to make sure you have all the quality possible. And you can change this at any point. I used to have download and keep originals on all the time. And then crossing over 5,000 photos on my phone, I had to turn on optimized iPhone storage. No big deal. Now let's jump into iCloud right here, about halfway up. Now here is your basic iCloud settings. You will see all this stuff here which you can choose to turn on and off. I'm not going to go through them all individually because this is just about backups. So about three quarters of the way down you will see backup. Now this used to hold all of the backup options but now it is literally just an on or off and shows the last time it backed up. So of course if you have it turned on it will actually back up when three requirements are met. When the phone is plugged in to charge that is when it is locked meaning the screen is asleep not turned off but just asleep and when it is connected to Wi-Fi it will do this once every 24 hours and it has to meet all, re all requirements for a certain amount of time so if you haven't seen it back up in a couple of days you probably just haven't had it met so for me I haven't really plugged mine in for a solid amount of time in order to do a backup but since I am on Wi-Fi right now I could hit backup now it doesn't need to be charging in order to do a manual backup jumping back here we're going to scroll up and right underneath the setup family sharing option you'll see storage go ahead tap on that now this is where you'll see your total storage now as you can see here i have the 200 gig plan but if you are on the free option you have five gigs you can always go under change storage plan to choose from any of the other different options from a 200 gig to a one terabyte and then there's the downgraded options which is 50 gigs which is what most people will go for I'm going to sign in there uh, 50 gigs as of now is only 99 cents a month so 12 bucks a year not too shabby it's definitely worth it if you need the space now going back here to the main storage page We'll see manage storage and then you'll see a little arrow over here which tells us there is more info to look at. Now for me this may take a couple minutes to load because I have over 500 apps and a couple devices. But here we are. 
So this is the manage storage kind of devices page. Now, this is what I was talking about before, where since I have iCloud Photo Library turned on, you see photos are at the top in its own separate category. If you have iCloud Photo turned off, you will not see that at the top. Now, this is where a lot of people end up losing uh, storage space. Because as you can see here, I have two phones and two iPads. Now, currently, I am using this phone. And I can tell that because it says this iPhone. Or if you're on an iPad currently, it will say this iPad. So it makes it really easy to tell which device you are currently on. So if I go into this phone here, I can see the last backup date was 925 of last year. And it's taking up almost 6 gigs. Which if you're on one of the smaller storage option plans, that's a pretty big amount. Now the reason it has this is because I upgraded phones, but just because you upgrade phones, it doesn't delete the backups from the previous phones just in case you wanted to uh, restore from them down the road. But since most of the time people restore their data and then they have no use for the old backup, go into the old device, just hit delete backup, and you will get the storage back on your iCloud account. And it will basically give 5.8 gigs back to my 200 gigs or your 5 gigs or 50 gigs, whatever you have. And same goes with the iPads. So this is usually the fastest way that people get data back because if you know that your previous phone always had enough iCloud storage and now all of a sudden you have a new phone and it's telling you you're completely full, this is probably why. You probably just have your your old phone and your new phone trying to back up. Now you'll notice when I choose the phone that I'm currently on, you get a lot more options. So again, this is gonna take a minute to load. So basically this is where you can choose what is backing up. So if I hit show all apps here, now this will load all of my 500 plus apps here. And you will see right underneath the app name is the amount of storage that it is actually using from your iCloud backup. Not how much is on your phone because backups are compressed. So this is not everything that's taking up on your phone. And remember, I have iCloud photo library turned on so photos are not at the top. If you have it turned off, and you're using the older way of backing up photos, you will probably see photos right at the top. I can see my latest backup time and the full uh, backup size of this specific phone. And again, this can change constantly, but you can go through and basically say, oh, I don't really care about Fuse being backed up, so I'm gonna turn off and delete that. Now keep in mind, this does not delete the data off your phone. If I leave my settings and go to find my Fuse app, all my data is still there. It basically just means if I were to get a new phone and restore from a backup, that app and its data would not come back. Of course, I can always just re-download the app in the App Store, but it will not uh, download all of my data unless that specific app uses its own servers to save your data like Facebook or Instagram or anything like that. And if you have done all that and you still don't have enough storage, unfortunately you are just going to need to buy more storage or you can plug in manually to a computer and back it up to iTunes, which is always free. Just keep in mind that that does use your um, computer's hard drive that you can fill up, or if your computer crashes, you lose all your data. So yeah. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day.